Do you feel the field of neurobotics is getting all the resources it needs to pursue this research vigorously? There's a lot of competition for those uh, federal dollars. Uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, I'm proud to say I think that this field is really now it's sort of you know taking off, and from the point of view that um, uh, we in in University of Washington leading uh, uh, in Seattle we started a center called the Center for Sensory Motor Neuroengineering. It's a National Science Foundation funded center. And they're funding the first five years, um, $18.5 million, and it's to continue for 10 years. So it's about $40 million project. So to really get this field going in a way that is not just let's get the prosthetic on people and then, you know, just let them do, you know, let them just do simple tasks, but in a way that really leads us to the future path of being able to do complicated you know, manipulation of objects to not just running, but what if some tiger comes in and be able to turn around really fast? Those, you know, or you know, running around in a rocky place where you have to adjust your you know, foot placement mm -hmm. all the time. Those agile, you know, fine dexterity, those things are really starting to be something that we are able to do using. Or maybe we could go beyond funding. normal human capability, get prosthetic wings, for example. <laughs> that would be interesting. It, Actually, it would be quite interesting. As a matter of fact, I mean, there's a distinction even in wording between sort of augmentation and enhancement. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, my passion certainly is in the area of allowing people who were, you know, sort of not able to do what they really want to do because of some limitations that they're experiencing to become, you know, become basically a full person and be able to enjoy their life. Well, this sort of touches on your... Uh, foundation, Yoki Works, uh, which is created to come up with solutions for people who have various limitations. How did Yoki Works get started and what sort of things does it actually do? Yeah, so starting from uh, how it got started. So, you know, I was a real researcher, belief that if I'm going to be a researcher, I'm really going to push the out, outer boundary as much as possible. So I worked in, in, the, in the university laboratory in a way that really looked 30 years down the line. Um, but at the same time, I was doing this kind of research because I wanted to affect people now. I wanted to see those smiles myself instead of 30 years down the line now. So, so that's where Yoki Works was born. I wanted to, and also I started to get you know, on the side, quite a lot of emails from people saying, um, I'm, I have these neurological disorders and I'm unable to do certain things. Can you help? And eventually I realized, ah, oh, this might be it. This is exactly where I can help people because I can combine the knowledge of neuroscience and the knowledge of robotics to build something that's useful for those individuals. So how does that work? Do you have a staff of people who respond to these requests? Mm -hmm. We have a group of volunteers who all come with different backgrounds. Some are you know, mechanical engineers, some are software engineers, some are physical therapists, some are nurses, some are moms. And you know, just really those team of players are getting together as the problem, not, not the problem, problem is probably the wrong, wrong word. Uh, somebody comes to us and say, I, you know, I'm interested in having you solve this problem. Can you help? We don't know what to do then we evaluate whether that's something that we can do within our team and a budget. And then we build this device and then we get them to try out. Yeah. Are you breaking new ground with this or basically engineering from already known principles? Oh, I think, I hope that we're breaking grounds to the point that um, some of the solutions we're coming up with is something that I've never seen anywhere else. So our volunteer team is doing an amazing job basically developing intellectual properties. Now, there's a huge demand for replacing limbs. You know, in time of war, a lot of people come back missing limbs and all kinds of body parts. Do you see this as a mass production industry where anybody who is missing any limb ultimately will be able to get it replaced very quickly and easily? I think so. I mean, and an even not only visible thing. So, you know, we're talking quite a, focusing a lot on the missing limbs, but missing functions in a brain, mm -hmm. right? So maybe there are some memory augmentations needed. Maybe there are some emotional support is needed. Maybe their you know, limbs are attached, but they're not moving as well anymore. 
So there are all those different kinds of augmentation that is possible. But yeah, I truly believe that uh, you know, lots of people are working in the right direction to eventually get to the point where people who are, in, you know, if they really want to augment something that's missing, they make a request and then we'll be able to move towards the right direction. So what do you think the world is going to look like in uh, several decades with this kind of technology? Do you think every time you walk down the street you'll be seeing people with these, you know, funny looking uh, arms and legs? Funny. And, or, <laughs> well, I mean, some of them don't, don't try to look like the real thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to make fun That's okay. of That's <laughs> okay. No, so, for example, like uh, people have artificial legs, but they don't look like real feet. It made it much better. I mean, they're springier. You know, they can move faster than a person with normal legs. Yeah, so actually, in a way, I made fun of you, but the, okay. the part about funny is actually a very important part. So along, one of the effort is to not be funny, right? Mm -hmm. So as we develop all those things, we also have to make sure that the societal support and the, mm. the value expectation, all that catches up at the same time. So this is actually really important. You know, mm. we all somehow are hardwired, you know, to look at something that looks different from the norm. So if somebody's on the wheelchair, we don't want to, but we can't help but to kind of try to look a little bit. Um, we want to just stop that. We, we, of course, we need to work towards building something that is so natural that people didn't even realize that it was artificial. But at the same time, people should think like, way cool, you know, mm. I wish I had chopped off my arm and then I wish I had that really, really cool arm. And, you know, I think that's another part that really requires education. Mm. Right, that might lead to the situation where a person deliberately has his legs amputated and replaced so he can be a more competitive Olympic runner. I mean, that would probably have to be illegal. Yeah, that probably has to be illegal. Like but, steroids. Yeah, I think, I think there's going to be a lot more of those people who will be accepted and rules are going mm. to change a little bit. I mean, golf clubs, rules, you know, mm. change to adapt to some of the technology advancement. Now, does this affect how we think of ourselves as human beings if, we if we're made up of all these extra parts? Does that alter the concept of what it means to be a person? Excellent point. And it all depends on who we're talking with. And I've had, certainly had conversation with people who believe that the moment we replace part of us with anything electrical or you know, metallic, then we're not us anymore. I'm certainly not a believer of that. I really believe that we humans are software and hardware to begin with. That brain is the software and then the, the body is the hardware. And that's how it is. And then if we replace part of it, that's just how it is. No big deal. Well, I'd love to ask more questions, but I've gotten the signal that we're almost out of time. So we are going to have to wrap up the show. I'd like to thank you very much for being here today. I've been speaking with Yoki Matsuoka, uh, MacArthur Genius Award winner, uh, creator of the Neurobotics Lab at the University of Washington. You've won a ton of other awards, which we haven't even mentioned here today. Hope you'll keep up the good work. If I ever need a prosthetic limb for some reason, uh, I'll look up your lab and uh, see what you've got. All right. Well, thank you, Marty. This okay. was really fun. And thank you for watching. Be sure to tune in next time. And visit our website, www.futuretalk.net. For Future Talk, I'm Marty Wasserman, and we'll see you next time.